Pretty much every well-known supervillain has their share of disturbing moments, with bad guys like the Joker or the Green Goblin having a rap sheet as long as Plastic Man's fully stretched torso. But famous villains don't have a monopoly on creepy moments, just well-known ones. Obscure villains have a plentiful collection of moments that are just as sinister and just as messed up. In fact, a lot of the time, these lesser-known characters end up being even more disturbing because they can be tailor-made to be as creepy as the writer can physically manage. Less well-known characters are just as capable of giving you nightmares as any of the more popular ones. It's also clear that writers often use them to get even more disturbing than usual. It's rare that you see Magneto or the Riddler with a huge alien mouth protruding from their stomach. So with that in mind, I'm Will Fort Culture, and here are the 10 most disturbing supervillains that you've never heard of. Number 10, Johnny D. Hailing from the wilder side of Marvel's mutants, Johnny D has the unusual superpower of having a screeching mouth embedded in his chest, which is capable of using people's DNA to create creepy statuettes that can be used in order to control those people at his will. In an unsolved mystery, we have yet to find out if this power is properly Johnny's, as he insists that the freak in his chest is a sort of parasitic twin with a separate brain to him, meaning he doesn't consider himself a mutant. All this said, it does seem significantly more likely that this is merely D's way of disassociating himself from the persecuted mutant race, as the mouth does do whatever Johnny tells it to, implying that it likely is a part of him. While it is an interesting superpower, seeing Johnny use it is always a little bit horrifying, in only the way powers that involve removing people's free will can be. Number 9, Mr. Quimper. There's a very good chance that this particular villain won't remain obscure for long, as with so many other indie comic book series being adapted for TV, there's a pretty good chance that we'll be seeing Grant Morrison's The Invisibles in a bright and shiny Netflix series sometime soon. For a creature with such a delightfully whimsical sounding name, Mr. Quimper is anything but fun. A member of the Illuminati-like Outer Church, a secret organization actually led by demons, Quimper owns a particularly unsavory strip club, where he apparently coerces his employees into grotesque situations like filming adult films with alien creatures. His powers are even worse, as Quimper recruits minions by making people relive their worst memories, using this pain to drive his victims into suffering so intense that they willingly allow the man to take control of them in order to no longer suffer. Number 8, Freak. One of the more sympathetic, disturbing villains, the somewhat cruelly named Freak was a drug addict who inadvertently took some of Spider-Man villain Lizard's body-morphing animal gene chemicals, believing that they were meth instead. From here follows an entirely grotesque transformation, which saw the poor unfortunate get his insides flipped onto his outside, slowly and gruesomely changing into a creature that resembled an oddly fleshy armadillo. This change is later revealed to also have removed the pleasure center of Freak's brain, which which, on the plus, would have removed any motivation to take drugs, but would also mean that the villain is literally incapable of basically feeling any kind of joy, which is a pretty rough fate all in all. With Freak's death in Absolute Carnage vs Deadpool number 2, it seems that we will never even learn his real name, which is kinda sad when you think about it. Number 7, Cornelius Sturk. Proving that some kind of weird fixation is a legal requirement to get into Gotham, Cornelius Sturk is in many regards yet another madman, aside from the small detail of his obsession with eating human hearts fresh from the source. Not just any old human hearts either, as Cornelius is a connoisseur, insisting on only eating hearts that have been harvested from people who experience great fear before they're killed. It appears that this cannibalistic compulsion is used to power Sturk's abilities, as the serial killer is able to not only alter how he appears to other people, but also to mess with their minds and fill them with fear, which is convenient given his preference to how he eats his meat. Number 6, Murmur. The kind of villain that horror movie bad guys dream of being like, Murmur's backstory is nothing short of a fresh nightmare, one that features him cutting out his tongue and stitching his mouth shut just to make sure he gets one or two extra points on the creepy scale. You'd be forgiven for thinking Murmur must have some kind of special power or secret fighting ability, but he's quite simply just a really creepy guy who happened to brutally mutilate himself for kicks. His blood is a little different, but that only prevents him from being 
being able to die from lethal injection, which is a disappointing bounty from the celebration box of superpowers. While Murma did appear both in the Infinite Crisis series and as an enemy to the Flash, he ended up still somehow going relatively under the radar, likely because all the writers at DC were too creeped out by him to actually use the character. Number 5, Black Womb. Taking disturbing villainy to the next level, Black Womb manages to have one of the most dislikable backstories ever, which consists of her having a series of purposeful miscarriages in order to provide mutant genetic material for Mr. Sinister's sick experiments. Amanda Mueller would go on to be tried for these suspicious circumstances and would be found not guilty, although this would only be because the court couldn't definitively prove otherwise. Mueller would also be responsible for the Black Womb project, which would show us what Amanda did to living children, as the recordings for the project would show her murdering a child in cold blood. Aside from this seemingly endless string of brutal child murders, we don't actually know all that much about Amanda Mueller, unless all there is to know about her is that she likes killing kids, which would be pretty worrying. Number 4, The Skinless Man. A classic does what it says on the tin villain, The Skinless Man is a man without skin, who is able to contract or expand his muscles as he wishes. In his defense, while this is super creepy, it also isn't his fault. Harry Pizer was initially part of the Weapon Plus program back when he had skin, which would give him the power to expand his skin in the same way he can now use his muscles. Pizer would be sent to retrieve an object known as the Orb of Necromancy, only to be punished for having killed men in in order to find it, with said punishment being the pretty severe case of them removing every inch of his skin. But this wouldn't stop the skinless man, as the villain merely trained himself to be able to do the same thing with his muscles, seemingly unharmed by the removal of a pretty crucial part of the human body. He isn't invulnerable though, as he would ultimately be killed in Uncanny X-Force 34. Number 3, The Mandrill. Unlike the majority of disturbing villains, Mandrill isn't creepy in a way that is readily apparent, like having no skin or a stitched shut mouth. Indeed, for all intents and purposes, the character looks as though he's just another animal-based villain to add to the metaphorical zoo that both Marvel and DC have built into their rogues gallery. It is in fact Mandrill's power that is the problem, as the bad guy gives off a pheromone that enslaves women to his will, which is entirely creepy. Sure, Poison Ivy is able to use similar pheromone powers to control men, only you seldom see it implied that Ivy uses these men as anything more than henchmen, where it's stated repeatedly that Mandrill uses his powers in a much different, much worse manner. Number 2, Odin Quincannon. When your comic has a character who has canonically had intercourse with a bunch of meat shaped into the figure of a woman, you know you have a slightly strange series on your hands. The unconventional role is fulfilled by villain Odin Quincannon, the owner of the local and very successful butchers. As cartoonishly awful and completely sickening as he is, Odin works as a wonderful metaphor for everything that Jesse Custer is not and is working against, a rampant, tyrannical businessman who has used his success to corrupt the town of Salvation, bribing the old sheriff to turn the other way. Perhaps the most disturbing thing about Quincannon is that, as much as he should feel like a caricature, there are elements of his character that still feel uncomfortably real. Well, that's and the fact that he had sex with a meat statue. It, it's both, really. Number 1, Kid Miracle Man. An offshoot of the bizarre, disturbing and darkly enthralling Miracle Man series, or Marvel Man series, depending on which company owns the series when you pick it up, Kid Miracle Man is just about one of the most messed up characters in history. Kid Miracle Man is unsurprisingly the sidekick to Miracle Man, and works on roughly the same power system as other heroes like Shazam, where he can transform into his superhero form after saying the word Miracle Man. The key difference is, however, that Kid Miracle Man is almost a different person, and as such decides that he doesn't fancy taking the back seat for a literal child, instead staying as he is for 20 years before Miracle Man realizes the issue with his once young ward. While this all sounds fine, it means that when Miracle Man is brutally beating down the villain, he's actually beating down a totally innocent child, causing him unimaginable pain. Similarly, when Kid Miracle Man does any of the terrible atrocities he carries out in the series, we know that a helpless child is watching every single untold horror unable to look away. Yeah, enjoy the nightmares. And there you have it folks, the 10 most disturbing supervillains that you've never heard of. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will4Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.